Hello and welcome. Uh, today we'll have another session of digital slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, uh, coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is uh, a part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture of Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter, to whom we're grateful for these uh, wonderful digital slides and the means uh, to uh, portray them. Our case today is uh, another gastrointestinal case, uh, an eight-year-old boy uh, who's experienced some right lower quadrant pain and uh, has seems to have some chronic perianal irritation. Uh, he uh, undergoes examination and it's determined that uh, his findings are suspicious enough to warrant an appendectomy. So uh, here we see the appendix uh, representative cross sections. Uh, and as we can see here, uh, the lumen is not particularly expanded. A little bit of purple debris in the center of the uh, lumen. Um, maybe fairly normal lymphoid hyperplasia, uh, but no discoloration in the wall, no evidence of serositis, uh, no evidence of gangrenous necrosis, um, really no uh, significant inflammation at all, some fecal debris uh, in the lumen of uh, the appendix. But maybe if you're an astute observer at low power, you notice that there's something that has a little bit different character in the lumen. Um, and so what in, is going on there may be a, a worthwhile question. Um, and in fact, as we look down here, we see uh, this might just be fecal debris, uh, but it seems to have a little bit different character. And in fact, uh, looking at it, we see that we have uh, actually some organoid structure and potentially viability. Uh, here we see sort of an outer membrane. Uh, we see these two little uh, wings or ailey on the sides of the lesion and some internal structure uh, that could represent an alimentary canal and uh, reproductive organs. Um, sometimes uh, these uh, parasitic lesions can actually uh, uh, present with uh, <clears throat> rather gravid uh, uteri with uh, um, abundant eggs or reproductive uh, products uh, in those uh, uteri. And notice that this external uh, chitinous uh, um, uh, membrane is, is quite firm and then internally uh, a little bit of more uh, muscular type of uh, tissue. So this looks to be a, a parasite um, and uh, the appendix is a, a site uh, that is uh, not frequently, but also not infrequently or unknown to harbor uh, parasites in various settings. Uh, so what parasites should we be thinking of? Well, the most common, of course, is Enterobius vermicularis. Um, and that has been associated with both normal findings, um, mild lymphoid hyperplasia, such as we see in our case, and uh, on occasion, acute appendicitis although that's certainly not the most common presentation, at least in some of the larger series of these cases. Uh, we can also see other uh, enteric parasites, such as Tinea coli or uh, other uh, Tinea species. Uh, and these more commonly present with associated gangrenous appendicitis, perhaps because of the larger size, they may be more prone to uh, create obstruction um, and altered drainage. Yeah, in theory, one would think that amoebiasis, giardia, ascaris, and uh, potentially even schistosomiasis could be seen uh, in the appendix, uh, but these are decidedly uh, very rare um, and not uh, heavily reported uh, if they are recognized. The life cycle of enterobius, of course, uh, is of interest. This is essentially a fecal oral uh, transmission cycle where the eggs are deposited near the uh, anus or rest on the perianal folds by the gravid female that uh, comes out at night and comes, returns in the day. Um, but um, at times the female may uh, reside in the, the lumen of the cecum uh, or fall down into the appendix. Um, and so that may interfere with uh, proper migration and so forth, uh, leading to the appendiceal symptoms. Uh, once on the skin surface, then those are um, contaminated to uh, uh, hands or other uh, um, materials that may then uh, come in contact and be ingested. Uh, and then the eggs uh, would hatch in the small bowel 
uh, and uh, develop into larvae, uh, which would then mature um, in the adult. Um, under the microscope, uh, if you're really astute, you can uh, uh, see and differentiate the sexes. Uh, here, one of the characteristic and I think very useful features, of course, to recognize is these uh, very uh, characteristic, slightly blue uh, lateral ailey um, that are present both in the male and in the female. Um, uh, the male, of course, will have uh, an uh, enteric tract as the female does here. Um, and then uh, reproductive organs, slightly different for the male uh, from the female, um, though uh, usually that's not uh, our particular concern as histopathologists. So uh, one thing to remember is that uh, occasionally these will show up in other uh, GI specimens, such as this uh, colonic biopsy, which as we see here has a, a nice um, parasitic uh, fragment here uh, sitting on the top of the surface epithelium. Uh, here we, again we see these ailey in a slightly different or contorted uh, fashion and we see the uh, enteric tract uh, probably reduplicated or, or cut in, in transverse section. We don't see the reproductive organs well but uh, suffice it to say that with these uh, characteristic ailey um, and the size and uh, presence of other uh, structures, uh, this is easily diagnosed as Enterobius vermicularis. So uh, our final sign out today is Enterobius vermicularis of the appendix. Uh, we hope that uh, you uh, have enjoyed that uh, and that uh, our explanation has been clear uh, and that you'll know what to think of when you see uh, an appendix uh, and uh, remember to not forget to look at what's in the lumen. Uh, because that can oftentimes be uh, missed and uh, that uh, would not be uh, uh, fulfilling our duty to the patient. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for joining us. And if you like this, please subscribe, uh, share it with your friends. Uh, and we, of course, always welcome your comments below. Uh, we'd like to know what parasitic diseases uh, you've seen in histopathologic sections um, and uh, what those circumstances were. So until next time, thanks for joining us.